Hello, hello guys. Welcome back to my channel. Marcio Marinho here. Today, as usual, we will have another exciting discussion. This time, we'll talk about Docker and containers. So, I'm going to start uh, first explaining uh, what Docker is and what is it for, what, what's the idea behind um, Docker. So, I'm going to share my screen with you guys. Yeah, so we're now here, you can see my screen. Um, traditionally, uh, for software deployment, what we used to do in the past, uh, when containers, they were not uh, this popular as they are today, whenever we want to deploy a new application, we usually uh, had a, uh, let's say, a server. So this is our server here. Let me add a label. So and the server could be uh, a Linux box, Windows, or any other operating system. And what we usually do at that point in time is we use to write our application. Let me add a new color to the application. Well, more or less the same way we do it today. That's our app. Uh, but the main problem is um, every single application has different dependencies and that is a major problem. Now, let's see what used to happen. So uh, in the old way, uh, we used to let me add a new color here to my shape. Uh, we basically used to uh, have, we still have an operating system here. Operating, or just OS to make our lives easier. So have AOS here. Again, can be Linux, Windows, anything. After that, uh, after we had that server, running AOS, we usually uh, install our uh, other dependencies. So let's say we have dependency number one here. Dependency number one. Let me uh, reduce the, yeah, it's better. I have dependency number one. Uh, likewise, uh, Dependence number two. And so on. So the very last step was uh, we could deploy our application because all, all those dependencies, they they were satisfied. And, th and these dependencies, they are usually other piece of software that we need um, to have in order to have our application up and running. So. A good example I can I can give you guys is uh, let's say I have a Java application. Let me again swap the color. Yeah, I have my Java application, but the Java application needs a JDK. Uh, it may need a many other piece of dependencies that we need to install, uh, new drivers, uh, new jar files, and so on. So uh, this was the, the big problem we used to face in the past before containers, they were uh, just popular and we have a few options um, because for example, if I install um, this application with these dependencies on a single server, later on, I may want to reuse the same server to deploy another application, which has other dependencies. And that is a major problem because what usually happens or used to happen is once you try our application number two here, then we need to go through the same process of uh, creating the, the dependencies, installing the dependencies, and uh, we usually uh, had some clashes because every application had their own dependencies, 
and then we used to run into uh, incompatibility problems with software dependencies, and it was a kind of nightmare. So here comes containers to, to solve our problems and, and to make our lives easier. Uh, what is a container? So let me hide myself to give more space here. This is a container. <laughs> uh, every time we send a shipment to somewhere else and it goes via a cargo shipping. So um, the company usually put uh, places all, all the goods inside a single container, which is this box structure here. And exactly the same concept has been used for containers in software because the containers are a easier way to arrange things inside the container here. Then you can have a kind of ship like this uh, with all containers arranged on an organized way. So we don't have, for example, if um, they are, uh, if the company is sending cars um, abroad, uh, they don't need to toss the cars all over the place. So things are organized. And there is a standard way uh, we can package the cars or the goods and store them on the shipping container. We can see the the ship container as a server or a virtual server which runs a container technology and then we have all of these containers here and each one of them will do something uh, different and each one of them them can even uh, be carrying something different for example one of them can, can be carrying cars the other one can be carrying furniture and so on. So translating this to, to our software world, let me close these screens here. We have um, Docker, which is a container technology. So if you go to uh, docker.com, that's exactly the same uh, concept that uh, we have for, for our software containers. So it's a standardized unit of software. So now it's uh, Docker brings us a standard way of uh, packaging our software with dependencies. So we can now package everything using Docker, all of those dependencies here, and then we can simply deploy that container uh, inside the server. Uh, as, as I drew before, so now we can have uh, the whole server here which is the infrastructure. Then we have a OS, Linux, Windows, and so on. Then I have Docker, which manages everything. And then we can have our applications running on Docker. And these applications, they have everything packaged inside a single package. So it's all isolated. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna now give you guys a brief uh, example. Let me... Uh, I'm going to add two uh, projects here. And the first project, uh, it's going to be a Java project. And the second project is going to be a um, Python project. So these are two, uh, two different apps. Uh, I'm going to have a single endpoint on both of them. And I'll be running them both simultaneously on my machine using Docker. So it's going to be pretty simple. Uh, first thing is I'm going to create my um, Java application and for that I'm going to use um, Java in Spring Boot. So it's a sample application. Um, just uh, select here a few dependencies uh, and there we go. You can just download that. Okay, I have a folder here with two, uh, two subfolders on Python and another on Java. So I'm going to go to the Java and then I'm going to get that application, place it in here, and then I'm going to extract the files here. So it's going to be a very simple a Maven structure, which I'm going to open now using my IntelliJ. Yeah, uh, it's going to load my, my project here. Uh, it's a standard uh, Java Spring Boot project. And now I'm going to um simply uh create a new package and a new endpoint here so a new package called controller and 
an endpoint called home controller. Go. Press controller, and then uh, I'm gonna have a an, an endpoint here, which is my request mapping. I'm gonna uh, point to slash and get home return hello world uh, from Spring Boot application. Here we go. Uh, I think we have uh, pretty much what we need from here. Uh, by default, uh, Spring Boot uh, will, will work on the port 8080. So just running a quick test here. Let me run the application. And yeah, the application is up and running. Now I can, let me get localhost 8080. So hello world from Spring Boot application. So it's working. Now I can close. And next step is uh, I can package uh, my application using Docker. So I have installed Docker on my machine as well. So I have Docker running here and I have a bunch of stuff that I have been <laughs> testing. Uh, this is my Docker. Uh, yeah, you can, you can find uh, all the on the installation uh, process here, they have a download, uh, and I'll also I'll also be deep diving in, on another video about that. And in order to package our applications using Docker, uh, we need a Docker file, which is a regular file. And then uh, we we have now to specify all the dependencies we need. For example, my Java application. If you guys remember, let me go back to that screen. Um, yeah, I one of my dependencies were Java 15, the JDK 15. Uh, this was an external dependency. So I have to add here a new uh, dependency. I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna inherit from an existing image from Docker, uh, which is OpenJDK 15. Docker has many um, different base images we can add, we can inherit from uh, CentOS, Ubuntu, and many other images. So just to keep our example simple, uh, I'm inherited from OpenJDK, which means I'm gonna get OpenJDK for free. Another thing is um, we have to make that image work. So I need to copy my dependencies and do whatever I need. That's my application part. Uh, I'm simply copying, uh, so I actually I'm copying the jar I have inside my target folder. That's gonna be my application package. And then uh, I'm adding it into the Docker uh, root folder for the application. And then I'm telling Docker now with entry point, whenever this container runs, just run this command for me, which is java-jar app.jar. That's a command to run the jar application. So um, let's take a, take a look here. Uh, I'm going to go to my command line now. Go to my vlog projects, the vlog projects, Docker. Java and then Docker demo. So I'm gonna run Maven clean package just to build my application. And yeah, pretty quick. If we take a look here now, um, we're gonna see that we have a target folder here. If you go to target folder now, uh, we have a jar file here, which is our application. So if I run uh, my application here, yep. So now I got my application running. I can say localhost 8080 and the application is running. So that's pretty cool, pretty good. Um, I can now uh, build uh, my application using um, Docker. 
as I have the Docker file, he Docker file here in the root folder, I can simply issue this command docker build dash t. That's the um, new image, the, the image name for, for my application package. And then I'm going to build from uh, the current folder. That's all we have to do. So once we run, here we go. Uh, we have, I, I have built my image. If I come in here, docker image ls, I have here my, uh, my image that was built by docker. Now I can uh, run my application using docker. So the command is pretty simple as well. Docker run dash D that's to run as a daemon or we could run. Uh, let me run first as a uh, interactive terminal. And then I'm exposing the port 8080 from inside the container. Remember that that container runs inside the Docker runtime. So I have to expose that port, which is 8080. And I have to map to my local port here on my PC, which I want to map to 88 as well. And I'm, I'm telling, okay, run this image here, which is, I just built that image. So I can run the application and it's pretty much transparent. So we can have exactly the same thing running. So I'm simply running uh, from Docker. So I can just kill the Docker process. Let me kill everything here. I had a few things running. Same thing here. So now I have nothing running. If I try to call it, so it's gonna die from a timeout. Yeah, that's it. So because it's, it's no longer running. So we just built our Java application. Um, let's gonna build our Python application now. So let me leave this thing open here. Let me open another uh, command line. Uh, vlog and Python. Uh, Docker and then Python. Uh, I already have Python installed on my machine, of course. Same way I had the JDK. So I can start writing Python. Uh, um, code. So I'm going to do something pretty simple. I'm going to write a, again, another web application, which has a single endpoint. Uh, for that, I'm going to create my virtual environment here. If you're familiar with Python, you know what a virtual environment is. If you're not, uh, you can just take a read. Then I'm going to activate that virtual environment. Okay. Uh, I'm going to install my library, which is my dependency, which is Flask, my micro web framework, as they call. And now uh, I'm going to write my code. Let me open. Uh, let me create a new. Uh, let me open that folder. That's going to be the uh, vlog projects, Docker, Python. Yeah, I have only uh, that uh, VM folder, which is my virtual environment folder. Um, let me get, uh, let me write a uh, main file. My main file is gonna be called app.python. And then I'm gonna add my, uh, my code in here. So that's pretty simple. Um, another thing I'm, uh, I'll need is the Docker file for my project. Docker file. Um, and then uh, I have to do in this Docker file, well, something similar, similar I've done in the Docker file here for the Java projects. I have, I have to add all the Python dependencies. So let me get back to my Python project. And likewise, I'm gonna add my Python dependencies. So just like I did for the Java project here, I'm inheriting from Python 3, just forcing the work deal to be slash. I'm copying everything to the working deal, installing my dependencies. 
Okay, which reminded me I have to create my my requirements text. This is to uh, hold all the other requirements I have. Remember that I installed Flask manually. Now I can do it via the Docker file. So I can run pip install. So I'm gonna uh, build my application. Yeah, now I'm gonna run my application on interactive mode. So it's running now. Now we can try it again. It's still running, so I can even uh, open a new window here and try it. It's still running. Okay, now I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna just uh, see. I have only one image running. Docker kill. I'm gonna kill this container. I'm gonna. Clean all, all images. Uh, system prone. Yes, which makes me, uh, which enables me to clean all images that I have it locally. Nothing running. No images uh, here. So now I can build it again. I'm going to build my Python. And let me build my. Um, Java project as well. I have too many windows here. Yeah, it's my Java project. Uh, yeah, now I'm going to build the Java project. So uh, it's going to take uh, a little while because as I clean it, everything, it's going to download everything again. I'm doing that only uh, as a showcase. Okay, it's done now, so it's it's finished. Now I can run uh, I can run both of them on interactive mode. Let me get here. Uh, that's my Java application. Actually, I can now run them in the daemon mode. Let me clean, run into daemon mode dash d. Likewise for my Python image. Okay, now Docker PS. I have both applications running here. Uh, as you guys can see here, they are listening on to different ports. The Python application is in the port 5000 and the Java application in the port 8080. So let me take a look here now. Uh, I'm going to open a new screen here. So if I go to my Java application, Hello world, Spring Boot. If I go uh, to the port 5000, that's a Flask application. Okay. Yeah, let me get back to myself here. So as you guys could see, Docker uh, is extremely powerful. Uh, what I showed you guys here was a simple glimpse of what is capable of doing. And um, there are many, many, many other things uh, that can be done with Docker and many other problems Docker can solve. So I hope you guys have enjoyed. Um, please hit the like button. Also click on subscribe. So we hit the like button. It's going to help me with the YouTube's algorithm. And subscribe if you won't miss any of my videos. So I'll see you guys next time. See ya.